happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah today we got a fox news clip of representative jim jordan absolutely ripping attorney general merrick garland to shreds guys um <clears throat> i mean we we kind of seen this coming especially with um the way Merrick Garland conducted himself in the latest congressional hearing, um, as far as like answering questions, he really, I, I feel like we didn't get much out of him. He acted like he didn't know anything. Um, and he, it's clear he knows it all. Uh, we're going to hop straight into it and see exactly what representative Jim Jordan had to say on the matter. Make sure you guys hit that like button and hit that subscribe button guys. Before we can get into it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Yo, I'll wait. Give y'all a little time. Okay, now we're going to get into it, guys. Just one election away from turning all of this around. Here with more, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan is with us. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Jordan. So, Garland said that Weiss has always had the authority to charge Hunter under, under any circumstances, anywhere. Um, says Weiss never changed his story. I watched you contradict that in great specificity and detail. Yeah. Would you care to go over that so everybody in America that well, might have missed yeah, it can hear it? The fundamental question is, if he already had the authority, why does he need the authority? I mean, that, that, that to me makes no sense, but that's exactly what he tried to say. Oh, no, he had it all along, but I still had to make him a special counsel. So I don't get it. The three letters they sent to us this summer, two to our committee, one to Senator Graham, tell three different stories. And the, the point I always make is the story who's been consistent has been the two whistleblowers. Their testimony has not wavered. And they, they were subjected to about three hours of cross-examination from Democrats in the Oversight Committee back in July. Never forget, on July 10th, David Weiss tells Senator Graham, I have not sought special counsel authority. Then on August 11th, the Attorney General, uh, General announces that David Weiss will be a special counsel. What happened in those 32 days? What took place? The whistleblowers came forward with their testimony and the plea deal that they were trying to sweep everything under the rug. The plea deal is declined by a judge who did her job. And that's why we got a special counsel. They were going to get away with all this, but for those two brave whistleblowers and that judge in Delaware who did her job. Let me ask you, you, you had a line of questioning with the attorney general about the statute of limitations and why the yeah. statute of limitations lapped and why it was important in the years 2014 and 15. These were the Burisma tax years. Exactly. And then you exactly. gave four facts that I think are critical. Uh, regarding yeah. this. Can you break that down for this yeah. audience? Well, the, the, the facts are real simple. Fact number one, Hunter Biden gets put on the board of Burisma. He gets paid millions of dollars for those tax years, 2014, 2015. Fact number two, he wasn't qualified to be on the board. In fact, he said it, not me. He said he got the position largely because of his last name. Devin Archer in his deposition said the brand was Joe Biden, the Biden name. Fact number three, the Burisma executives ask Hunter Biden, can you help us? We're under pressure from the prosecutor. Can you help us there's a call made to dc fact number four joe biden goes to ukraine starts the process and actually successful in leveraging our tax dollars to fire the very prosecutor who was putting the pressure on burisma those facts are not in dispute they are as solid as can be and here's what's interesting that fourth fact is exactly what the confidential human source told the FBI, and the FBI recorded in the 1023 form, the same 1023 form Christopher Wray didn't want to let Congress see. Those said that, that it's all spelled out in there, so you got corroborating evidence. That's the pattern, and then they let the statute of limitations lapse expire. There's probably no one, any person in your audience, that raucous studio audience you have right now, if they owe hundreds of thousands of dollars, if they owe hundreds of thousands of dollars, I bet the DOJ doesn't let the statute of limitations lapse for them, but they did for the president's son because Burisma goes to the White House. Joe Biden is involved, not on the gun charge. They can do that. That doesn't involve Joe Biden, but on Burisma, it goes to Joe Biden. Let me ask the fundamental question here. As, as Garland was pleading ignorance all day long, does the attorney general not have to sign up? We had... The first plan was no charges. The second plan was, okay, we'll do the slap on the wrist deal. We'll put in the plea agreement an immunity deal and in the gun diversion portion of this. Thankfully, that judge caught that. Right. Then plan C was, oh, I guess we're going to have to indict him on the gun charge, but at least that still protects Joe. If, if Hunter has to be sacrificed, he gets sacrificed. Because uh, he was pleading, oh, no, no, independence right. for Weiss. 
Wouldn't the attorney general have to sign off on whatever decisions are made here? Well, you would think, particularly when supposedly David Weiss goes, and this is a testimony we've got, David Weiss goes to the U.S. attorney in the District of Columbia, and he declines to allow him to prosecute there. You would think the attorney general would weigh in then, but it looks like he didn't. Now he's weighing in with the special counsel. The other thing I think is happening here in this third plan, I think the special counsel allows him to extend this out even further. So we'll see what that all means. David Weiss is scheduled to be in front of our committee on October 11th. They committed to have him come in front of our committee. I hope they will honor their commitment. Chairman Jordan, great job today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yo, there we have it, guys. Representative Jim Jordan calling Merrick Garland on all of his stuff. And, and that's why I can get behind and I can support Jim Jordan. We need more people like him um, in Congress. We all know that Wise always had the authority to charge Hunter anywhere, anyhow, but he wasn't going to do so um, until he got the green light from Merrick Garland. Um, option one didn't work with Hunter Biden where they wanted to you know, give him no charges. Then they moved to option two where Hunter got a blanketed immunity that didn't work, got shut down. Now they're on to option three, where they just roll Hunter right on underneath the bus. Um, as long as Joe Biden is not in connection, they're cool with it. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm sure that, you know, Hunter will still get another slap on the wrist. You guys let me know um, your thoughts in the comment section on the whole situation. Um, I just feel like, you know, Merrick Garland got up there and he didn't really, his testimony didn't really say much. He did a big, I don't know show where he basically act like he had no knowledge of anything going on around him. Well, we know that is not the truth. Um, he knows what's going on. He knows the, you know, the back end, um, corruption, corruption and connectivity of the whole situation. Um, but he of course is going to hide it because he's a part of the Biden administration. Um, well, he's allied up with the Biden administration for now. Um, until some more details come out on Biden, which connects him to Hunter. And then, that's when everyone's going to start turning. Let's be honest, guys. Um, yo, make sure you guys hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, guys. We're on the road to the truth, guys. Hop aboard for the journey. Y'all catch you guys on the next one. We go.